Okay, okay I'd like to bring the meeting to order, finance committee meeting. Um, select board will be here over there in a little bit. Um, they have another meeting at this time. Um, we have uh, <clears throat> this is an April 23rd meeting. Um, and the agenda for tonight is we will be uh, presented with um, the budgets for the recreation, the assessors, water department, water department transfer, review of school budgets that may only be frontier um, because Wayland Elementary won't be voted on until Thursday. Yes, okay. you have um, here. We'll take a peek at the capital budget and we'll also discuss staff salary adjustments as uh, as we move forward. Uh, okay, so let's let's turn be good. Okay. Um, but let's start. Do I have has every, everybody read the minutes? Yep, I make a motion we accept the minutes of the I, last meeting. We want to discuss it as oh, yep. in person. The right. minutes mention us discussing the COLA, 3% COLA increase, but they right. did not mention us approving that yeah, we voted on it. A motion that we voted on it. I think that needs to be stated. I will amend those minutes. That's absolutely true. Other than that, I'll second the motion as amended. Okay. As amended. Um, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Brenda, yes. Yes. Dan, yes. Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 And that's good. Um, the minutes from the previous meeting passed with the. <laughs> As brought forth by Jim Kirkendall. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about our Recreation Commission. And representing the commission is the chair of the commission. Yeah, um, well, Wayne is the uh, chairman. Oh, and Wayne I'm, is the chair. Yeah, and then I'm the rec director. Okay. Yep. Um, there may be individuals who are not familiar with yourself. Could you introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Chris Williams. Um, rec director here in Waitley, live in Waitley over on River Road. Um, gym teacher up in Conway. I coach varsity baseball in Frontier. Uh, so local guy in local sports. Okay. Is there anyone here you, you don't know? <clears throat> um, no, I think I've at least recognized everybody. Okay. Terrific. <clears throat> okay, so um, Chris. You, um, the Recreation Commission is asking the request is for twenty thousand five hundred dollars. The increase is a six point two two percent, or twelve hundred dollars. Once you just take us through um, where the increases are and yep. uh, the why behind them. Um, so first one that I'm seeing is with water. Um, we. Uh, I mean, I'm seeing that we had used zero. I know that's incorrect. We spent, I believe, $100 last week. Um, Wayne recommended that adjustment based on um, potentially using more water at our fields. Um, we're getting getting hoses and sprayers, and yep. uh, that dirt turns into a dust bowl. Um, mm -hmm. So that was his recommendation for the water. Um, Building maintenance, um, we doubled that for this year. Our game plan is um, we are trying to create an additional storage space inside that barn, um, something with insulation um, so that we can keep basketballs and stuff in there, soccer balls in the off season. We won't have to worry about mice um, or anything like that. So that was our, uh, our purpose for that increase. Um, also, I'm not sure where this money will come from, but though, I don't even want to like say it out loud, but those new bathrooms already have bird damage from the back. So the back? they, no, from the back. From the so back. they on the, I guess it would be the east side of the pavilion, hacked through into those new bathrooms, wow. which is pretty wild. Yeah, so. Well, I looked at that with Keith already. It's not isolated in the bathrooms, it's all over the building. Yeah. And birds. 
Yeah, they're they're pet moving in the middle of it. The holes, the woodpeckers. Oh, I didn't keep the low cost solution how to fix that. It was only that house. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, and will that come out of the recreation budget? I don't know. Okay. I can't keep the something prepared for it. So. Okay. Um, but yeah, so the, the additional storage space in the barn is our justification for that. But that's just the bird thing with something else to be prepared for. Um, for Lady Park, that budget has been going uh, quite well for us. We've been able to put a ton of money into Hurley, which has been awesome. Um, that place is looking pretty sharp these days. Um, so our philosophy with that was, um, you know, continue to grow at that place and extra resources makes it possible. Um, we're looking to add infield mix. Um, um, looking to do infield mix, um, potentially um, do some, like, Fix some parts of the fence. Um, we're looking for a new groomer for our sand pro, so like someone's breaking up the fields, um, all that, all that different kinds of stuff. Um, and that's something we just want to keep doing annually, just so we can keep those facilities um, as elite as possible, because that is a beautiful piece of property down there. So we're just trying to it really is to make that bigger and better. Um, you know, I think that's. I mean, that's a nice little pride spot of weight leaf for sure. Uh, become, a, become another jewel for the town. Yep, um, absolutely. And I don't think, oh, uh, I, I mean, comparatively, we, uh, I think we stand alone in the quality. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. That soil is the best of the world as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, yeah, that was our just, justification for that, just continuing to um, invest in that place over and over again. Um, the fields for the fire station, we were able to accomplish um, the goal that we had, had set last year to make that place playable. Um, so we figured that cutting our budget in half for that was appropriate. Um, so that was why we made that adjustment, because we utilized our resources last year to get that that place uh, a little bit better prepared. Um, and then you go sports equipment replacement. Um, that's something just constantly having the best stuff. Um, our basketball coaches, our soccer coaches, our baseball coaches, there's no issue like, do we have enough basketballs? It's no, every single person gets a basketball, every single person gets a soccer ball. Baseball teams are having two buckets of baseballs a piece. Um, you know, just this week we ended up buying new sets of catcher's gear just so that they would be safer for the rookies' kids. Um, so just constantly doing those, those kinds of updates. Um, you know, they're different every year, certainly. Um, like this year, we did not have to invest money in practice baseballs, which was huge. Um, because we did such a big purchase last year, and then next year we will most likely have to, you know, add more baseballs to the bunch. Um, we also, we run the summer baseball program now. Um, so with that, um, you know, buying, uh, like warm up t-shirts for them, um, which is the same thing we do with back with the regular rec, um, regular season rec stuff is, you know, you buy the Jersey tees each, uh, each time and we do those instead of regular uniforms, just because tracking those down is an absolute nightmare. And the kids get the like, you know, they're wearing Wheatley basketball shirts, they're wearing Wheatley baseball shirts to school out in town. So it gives them something to be excited about, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so yeah, that was justification there. And then I believe the last one was personnel, and we just anticipated whatever that little bit is that goes up each year. Um, just kind of having the resources for that in there. Um, and that's that's pretty much that's that's good. So, anyone have any questions, for Chris, or um, comments? You got yeah, two things. One is the the water is up two hundred. Is that a function of it uh, early now being metered rather than it not oh, having been before? Perhaps. Yeah. So that was yeah. That one was you know obviously it, it, it had been zero before, before that, and that, right. I know that we put meters in on town building. Okay, understood. So that's probably the reason that. And the other question I have is, can you tell us about your capital request for the back pages? 
Yes. Um, so, so far um, for that, we're remaining positive, um, you know, looking forward to the official town vote um, and hopefully getting a you know, positive result from that. Um, we have uh, the budget for that, which was approved by the CPA um, or the CPC, excuse me. And um, so we're we're just hoping we're in a good spot for that. Um, we have it lined up with who we're going to go through. We have a game plan for getting the the turf for the for the surface for it. Then we found out that CPA application did not cover that. Um, I think Judy um, might have discovered that. So in order to get the turf, our um, we've worked alongside. Um, the Cal Ripken League, and they have resources that they want to donate to us so that they can um, add their hands into that and helping out because obviously, you know, those guys are going to be using a lot. Um, so that's that's our game plan. With okay, the, uh, when, when you get that through, you can just drop a note to the town administrator system just you know, so that we know roughly the amount of the donation. Sure. Okay. Good to know. Um, questions, thoughts? Um, <clears throat> Chris, can you speak to your revolving fund? Yes, uh, revolving funds in a good spot right now. Um, we are we have a little hiccup with uh, me and Amy Schrader working on that with um, like the amount of money that the map that I had and that Rec Desk provided with our registrations for the spring, but there's something in that that is uh messing that up temporarily so that money is not in our revolving fund yet but we will have an additional i think it's 48.85 um from baseball registration that'll be going into that i think right now it's at about seven i want to say um, i was talking with dara earlier in the week um and yeah then we'll get that in there and, and we'll be sitting in a good spot. We like to keep that, you know, right around ten at all times, just we have that. And and that goes right back to the kids. Yes, absolutely. Um, so a uh, good thing that we did uh, with revolving funds this year was, um, you know, getting getting those jersey tees. That's a lot. Of, we use that. We use revolving funds for um, officials for soccer games, basketball games, baseball games. Baseball umpires these days, it's like 75 bucks to get a patch umpire. Um, so that starts to pile up. Um, we utilize high school kids uh, for the majority, just like local athletes from Waitley, um, Five Fields, Bab, uh, both, both kids who grew up playing Waitley Rec Sports. Um, there are officials um, for that. And uh, yeah, just stuff that is outside of our budget. Um, that's just been a great resource for us to rely on. But yes, everything is, is going back into those kids. Um, um, no, okay. um, we could, I don't have any more questions, I just have a comment. And that you know as well as I do, the rec league is dovetailed with what happens at, at the elementary school. And we, as a group, don't say yes or no to any, to any budget coming forward. We only recommend to the towns at town meeting whether or not they should vote for a budget. Okay. And over and above uh, access to sports is the uh, fact that um, uh, sportsmanship is key. Yep. That teaches those kids something. And the thing we need to avoid at all costs is stacking the teams. Yep. Yep regardless of love the sport because I know what you run into you yep. have certain fathers that or mothers yep. that want to coach the team and their sons or daughters have friends that they want on their team yep. um, and you got a tough job to try yep. to um, you know, get around and around that so it's just something that doesn't go unheard right yep. and uh, well like um, last year like we had that we had that issue with uh, grade three, four basketball, and it was like right back to what we're doing. Yeah, um, yeah, we had a whole nother tryout. Something like uh, I do like to rely on on the coaches, and 
I, I haven't had like a coach's conflict yet. Like last year was kind of the closest one. Um, so we've been good with that. And that's something I tell those parents, whether they want to hear it or not, is convenient rides do not count. Friendships do not count. Favorite coaches do not count. Um, the only guarantee is siblings would be together, um, which sure. obviously is quite reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that is that's a huge goal for us. Because yeah, you don't want one team being top dog and some team else feels like a B squad type thing, you know. Um, absolutely. absolutely. And we hear that uh, in that particular incident that you speak about from last year was quite well known and you handled it very well and you handled it quickly and you put the fire out. So thank you. Yes, sir. Nope. No other questions? No. Done. Thanks for coming in. All right. Awesome. Thank Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you. Thank you. There's no gamble involved. Is there yet? No, not yet. I'll have to uh, run to talk to the state and get some money lines going. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Back at the moment, I think I put it in Board of Assessors, and we have found that. We have students. Yes, we have it. Everybody have it? Yep. Okay, wonderful. Board of Assessors. And we have Fred Olaski, who's here to, uh, who's one of our assessors, and to speak to the budget and to, um, general state of uh, assessment of our properties. Okay, Fred. I think I know everybody, everybody knows me here, I have a board. For sure, so, for sure. Yeah, I've been chair of the board of assessors for I don't know, six, seven years. <laughs> I've been assessor in town for about 15 years, so. I've been in all of your houses probably once. Coming up, so we know time, it. Maybe coming up soon. Uh, I'm here with kind of a, a usual for the Board of Assessors because uh, our longtime uh, assessor finally decided to retire after 31 years of service. Cynthia Herbert uh, retired on March 27th of this year, after I say after 31 years of service. So we right now are uh, without an assessor, we're in the process of hiring a uh, consultant to fill in for the rest of this fiscal year and also the next fiscal year. There was an announcement out or an ad out, I guess you call it, for people interested in, in being a, a, an assistant assessor for the town, a part time. It's a 16 hours uh, unbenefited position. We advertised this in uh, March sometime, uh, early March. We've interviewed probably six or seven people for that position. Uh, most of them local, some from lately. I can tell you one from Hatfield, son of uh, Amherst, Coleraine. Greenfield, people have shown an interest in the position, uh, but none of them had any assessing experience or really experience in real estate appraising, real estate appraising and properties, which is a major function <laughs> of the assessor. So while we were in the middle of the interviews, I guess we're the last one maybe two weeks ago, we're also reaching out to other other consultants that we've had in the past to see if they're interested in helping us or if they knew anybody that was interested in the position. Uh, 
Some of them said, okay, we'll help you part time, but it won't be a complete job. It will be partial, you'll have to do something else. There was one group that was, was interested uh, in, in helping the town. And um, we had some communications with them. They, they seemed to be a, a very reliable company. And the more we talked to them, they, they, they seemed to be a good fit for the town because, well, the company is out of Lemonster, Mass. Uh, they have contracts with, I think, 60 other towns to provide assessing services <clears throat> to the town. So they 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 do the same thing like what Cynthia was doing here. Uh, they would provide that that service. So we were kind of in the last month or two going back and forth with them, deciding, well, is that something we want to pursue, or do we want to re-advertise and hope to get somebody here? It's, uh, Instead of that, okay. At the same time, we were we were advertising this position. Cynthia Cynthia told us in January, middle of January, she was leaving into March. Uh, we didn't advertise the position till March for whatever reason. At the same time, well, uh, Conway was looking for a, an assistant assessor, just like we were, and so many years experience. Uh, Ashfield was, and there was one other town, Worthington, maybe, was also looking. So uh, I guess I, I encouraged through Jessica that we need to advertise the position, and that's when we did it in, uh, in March. The other towns, the in towns, so, well, Conway is kind of going the same way we are, leaning towards a consultant, mm -hmm. the same consultant. That we were only leaning towards. Uh, what this consultant would do would, would actually be in our office here, uh, uh, probably eight hour, eight hours a week, <clears throat> either one day or one day a week or two half days. Uh, and it would also be shared with Conway the other time that he's not here in our office. Uh, mm -hmm. And that time he's not in our office, there would be told. Uh, uh, over, there would be a, a phone number access, access by a phone and email to this consultant that would respond with a short of the questions that people had. Is so, that is that is that role in the budget? Yes. Okay. Yes, that that consultant was is the 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 amount that we were told it was forty thousand, and you can see for the twenty five. Our assistant assessor contract services yep, yep. forty thousand for uh, for a fiscal year. Uh, okay. We also have a, a interim contract for two months this year that was prorated for that. That we have money in our budget, current budget, cover this year mm -hmm. two months. Next year, that that would go up to the forty thousand. That's what. But their goal is for uh, the other personnel expenses. Well, the assessor's uh, stipend, and that's the same. So when we have three three assessors uh, full time, longevity was for Cynthia because she was here for so long, so that'll go away. Uh, the other requests here are, are, are pretty similar to last the current year budget, other than software fees. See, the problem we, uh, we have, not a problem, but a concern that the software that we're using, Patriot software, is getting obsolete, and they're recommending we update that. Uh, we've been holding off, since it's been holding off for two or three years, not doing an update. Uh, it's finally come down to, to uh, that company no longer provides service to, to update or manage it, and another company has taken over doing that software. So that's why you're going to see software fees of $9,200. Kind of uh, right. most of that's a one time, one time fee. Yep. Uh, year we were paying $2,700 for that. So the $6,500 is an increase for the, for the improved software, and that will be. Installed on our computer here, and in, in the assessor's office, 
and the consultant will have remote access to that from, from their location. Mm -hmm. And that data will also be stored on the cloud so they can get the data and files remotely as well as here in the office. So that's what the 65 fighter is going to do. Uh, okay. It's a, a mapping fee. Some of the fees, oh, when they, when they, part of the consultant's work is to do proper evaluations. We were paying $9,000 a year to pass to do that. That's included in their contract, and their contract price was 40000 Okay. So they, were, they were doing that. Also, the utilities work that we were doing doesn't show on here, but there's two utilities that we have to hire out consultants to do for roughly $2,000. That's included in the $40,000. Well, that brings that down. Right. And, and the other thing <clears throat> that's in here is, as been shown, is, is the uh, ATV, uh, the tax, uh, ballot tax board. If you have to go to to tax court to argue about an assessment, which we did a few years ago, they cost several thousand dollars because uh, we had to hire an appraiser and a special consultant to do that. They're all offering to do that for us. If we need that right now, it's quite there, there's something brewing, I say. One of the property owners is not as satisfied and threatening. So we don't know where that's going to end up, mm. but they would represent us at tax board if it does end up here. And so that's that's what the, the, the differences are. You can see it, it yep. is an increase in a budget of $12,000. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been pretty level all, all these years. You can see from 21 through 24. Right, right. So budget's been, been pretty level. Yep. So this year, where we're doing major changes in the software, and also have this consultant sure. on, on board to, to do the same thing as Cynthia did. And there would be full time, well, I wouldn't say full time, but, but most of the time, access to somebody in the assessor's office. <laughs> Cynthia was here only two days a week. This person, well, it'll be one day plus the other four, supposedly remote, and have access to, to their expertise uh, remotely. So. Well, that's good. That's good for the town. Right. Okay. Thank you, Fred. Um, if I can make yep. that time. Uh, so if we're just approved the contract. $40,000 contract? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and a two month to finish out this fiscal year, <laughs> yeah. which will get paid for how the reserve fund will. Yeah, there's money in the assessor's account yeah. now between salary and right. expense. We'll just yeah. you'll do a transfer in May or June. Uh, and just to flesh out what Fred said, the contract calls for someone being here either two half days or one full day mm -hmm. a week from the two half days and one full day. Or 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 or, 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 or okay. eight hours a week. Okay. But they'll also be in Conway one day. You know, anything you know, yeah. really of a crisis nature happened, they're in Conway. Good and they also, as Fred yeah. mentioned, had the phone support, which I think is pretty good. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've got money. Yeah. Okay. Is it one person or an organization? It's one person dedicated to us in okay. Conway. So we get the same person. For but you. they're going to also have the resources of the entire firm okay. behind them. So they'll be learning as well. And they have those people to mentor them and ask any questions. Yeah, the one person they're hiring, they told us who it was, supposedly now, I don't know, they mm -hmm. signed a contract who lives in Amherst. So it is, so it's close by the side of Lemonster where they would commute a lot. And so it's in Amherst. And they would, they would train that person in every aspect of what assessors need to do. Otherwise, if we hired somebody like we were interviewing, many of them didn't have any experience. So we have to train, Cynthia would have to train that person when she was here. Now, when she left, there was nobody available really to train that person. So mm -hmm. uh, that's up to them to do something. Right. And, and the town that they have, the other surrounding towns that they use them, uh, Leverage uses them full time, uh, New Salem, Wendell. Uh, 
and an image range field that's part of this and in orange. So if you look at, I looked at the Wendell site, the left side, the orange site the other day to talk to assessors to see what they thought of the company. I got the company right away, so they were there already providing Maybe. services to that town. So there are a bunch of towns in Franklin County that they are Good. servicing. It's not all of the eastern part of the state. Okay. So. Uh, Bob, I want more. Go ahead, go ahead, Fred. Um, as far as the software goes, in the past, the select board is authorized using some of the COVID relief money for software for other departments, for the treasurer collector and right. the accountant. And <clears throat> I can't prove anything, but I would suggest to the select board that we approve the 6500 for the base software. Mm -hmm. um, it's not the not the annual maintenance, but the same way we pay for other software upgrades or through change, that, through through those through, funds through, through those funds. So mm -hmm. maybe it'll take that sixty five hundred off budget. Just saying, you won't, I can't, you won't I can't get guarantee, you won't get an can't guarantee anything, from, right? but I'm just saying we've done, <laughs> we've done that in the past. Yeah. Other departments with mm -hmm. the same kind of expenditure. We're right back here. Um, just thought you'd like to know. Very nice. Very nice. Any other questions regarding the assessors? Fred, when's the next reval? Two years, I think two years from now. Okay. Mark it on your calendar. It's a five year cycle. So. Okay. Very good. Um, thank you. I know you've been through a lot with uh, the retirement and all of that. And uh, things look Good. Yeah, all, all the interviews and stuff we've been down since yeah. January, I guess into January it all started. So we're finally coming to coming to the end. Great. Okay, Fred, thank you thank very you. much. Um and we're good. Okay, we're at 633, which means we are seven minutes ahead of schedule. Thanks, <laughs> Fred. Brad, you got to thank you from Brenda. Sounds like a good deal. Right there. Seven more minutes to talk? No. 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 property values. No. No. We're good. Thank you very much. That, that, that'll be a sidebar. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That'll be the meeting after the meeting. Okay. Thank you very, very much. Uh, we will move on to discuss what a department. And I see we have pretty much the whole department. Okay. Um, okay, we're going out to the enterprise fund. Full um, tab 10. And we have um, okay, so as we look at the budget of the um, the Enterprise Fund. Um, I'm looking at, and tell me if I'm wrong, Wayne, but um, we are at a total of, in the budget overview, $257,280.94, uh, with um, a change from 24 to 25, of minus 2.19% translating into $5,749.06 less, correct? Nice, okay. Um, why don't you tell us, why don't you run through, um, well, when, I, when, when you look at the budget, there aren't really any areas that there are significant increases because the total is a negative. But <clears throat> why don't you run through and tell us what your concerns are and um, you still have a request. Okay. Yeah. All right. The biggest increase would be in the salaries. Me or the superintendent going to 40 hours a week. Yeah. The I mean, really, the only other increase is electricity and the cost of testing. We're going to do more testing went up a little bit. 
the engineering, a lot of that has to do with that drops a lot because we're in the hopefully the ending stages of applying for our water management act permit. Mm -hmm. There's only 10, about ten thousand dollars left in that contract. <clears throat> The building issues merger dropped a lot because the booster station and everything's done. And I need much more to do. Okay. Down a column of 50, oh, it's just 500 now. Down a column of stuff. Is <clears throat> sure we felt like everybody else is up. Um, okay. So when I see superintendent slash operator, is that you, Wayne? Both of them? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, Billy Smith, he's still he's the backup. That's Bill. Oh, okay. okay. So what's the reason for the increase again? I went I went from 30 hours to 40 hours. Oh. Why? <clears throat> A lot of it's work load, I guess call it. A lot of people, a lot more people. We have to the biggest thing we have to do is a letting copper survey and very extensive you got just about they want to know how many lead service lines what year the houses were built with everybody this is everybody on the system what size pipes going into the house what type of pipes what type of plumbing in the house uh these are part of it. the uh That you know that that, you. that sounds like a one-time thing. Yeah. So it's gonna be done for uh August. No, September. Like, you, you you know, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. It, so you're it's gonna take you 40 hours a week to get this done, but in a year you're not going back to 30 hours. No. The thing is the plus the the DEP two years ago when we had our sanitary survey was pushing. They wanted, they actually wanted one guy at 40 hours and one at 20 hours for the size of the system. But I think, you know, I mean, after talking with them, they'll be fine with one at 40 and Billy staying on at four. How does the soil work? Well, I, I, I was going to ask another question. For, oh, okay. Yeah. The increase from 54000 to 86000 that's 32000 yep. for an increase from 30 hours to 40. So one-third extra hours. And it's, which, would, which would that be... That number is deceiving. It was the 2024 number was off of 25. Uh, then we had to move it. We moved it up by the 30. Now we went to 40. Okay, so yeah. oh. so you went from 30 hours to 40 hours. Well, the, so it's 10 the number hours. you see for the 2024 appropriated was for 25 hours. And we moved, we had to move that to 30, an extra five. So it's actually the, the number. The 54 to 24, the extra for the additional salary mm -hmm. covered the increase then plus a little bit out of the budget mm -hmm. to get it to 30. And then the 30 to 40 brings it up to what it is now, 86. And what is that based on? What, what's, is, is, it, is it comparatively, is it an hourly rate? Is it? Yeah, it's uh, 4409. I think it's an odd. 4409? No, 4009. Oh, 
Um, so was this as a result of the personnel committee? Did they have um, no, so this is very good. This was between the water commissioners. This was between the water commission. Well, the water commissioners decided that to keep Wayne on, yeah. not looking for another job, you have to give him an increase in pay to equal other departments. In trying to get a license to help you know, to control the water department, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. We went through that back four or five years ago when Wayne came on. Yeah. So if you don't pay an employee the property, he's going to move out. Then we'll be in a little bit of hurt. George, is that $40 salary? Is that, or are we raising that comparable to the starting communities when they pay their head water pushing per hour? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, one other question. How are your revenues meeting, matching your expectations of revenues? And following up on that, how is your current cash flow based on those revenues? Thanks. I can give me. I only have two comments. So with the new rates, that's the spring projections and the fall. So have the all all here. I owe you for a meter. Are you the same? No, no, no for anyone else. Okay, so um, the last hike, trail, the last water uh, increase that you sent out, the bills went out and when? Um, April was there. Okay, just got over. Yeah, so have you started to receive that revenue back in? Yeah. Okay, and how's that going? Good, I think. Yeah. 20 large, 20. Yeah. All right. And um, so, what is that number? What not? So, what is the what is the cost of water within the enterprise fund to the town residents who make use of it? The cost of water? Yes. I don't know if I don't want to know. It was four sixty five or what based on how much you use. Yep. It's a right. It's it's a tiered rate now. Okay. Depending on how much you go at zero to twenty five thousand, twenty five thousand to fifty thousand and fifty thousand above. Mm -hmm. Then there's two I don't know how my head, two rates. One for residential and ag, and then one for commercial industrial. Mm -hmm. And then what's the other? Then there's a bunch of <clears throat> what would you call them? Bees. Bees. I mean, it's Bees. no different than one of the other town, like yep. the back test and the back blow preventers. Mm -hmm. If you got sprinkler systems, you pay for it. Uh, everybody gets a service charge, depending on the size of your meter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should well, if, if I can just follow up, then. sure. I, I want to get back to the cash flow. Based on your projections of the revenue, are you going to meet your budget expectations? And are you going to be able to pay all your bills out of your revenues? Or are you yes, the one deceiving thing with that is if you look at the projected for 2024. No, you won't reach that. Mainly that's because I put that, I don't think I was supposed to, but then I thought I was supposed to. Two years ago, three years ago, that whole thing about putting uh, $200,000 in the budget for building the center booster station and yeah. taking it out. Yeah, yeah. Well, I still did that. So I put up an extra there was $100,000 left on it to pay. So I put that in the budget for revenue mm -hmm. and then out of the budget to spend. But most of the money didn't come in mm -hmm. in fiscal 24, it came in in 23. You know what I mean? So well, it was there. It's there. Yeah. And it's the loans paid off. It's yeah. just not going to show on 24 as income. Mm -hmm. 
If I can, yeah, sure. Go ahead. One, one more. Uh, I don't see anything in the budget for putting away any money towards capital, yeah, future, right. future capital expenses. You, you'll get that one. Okay. Okay. We've been, well, we've been talking about this for a while. Realize that whole rate structure was set up based on revenue projected. Looking at previous years' consumption, previous years' consumption, so that if you get similar consumption, the right structure, there will be revenue enough to pay all the bills and put some aside. What's actually going to come in, you don't know, because you're only projecting. And with the okay, so I just didn't see anything on, on this budget for a cap, you know, putting into putting aside for capital. I've been trying to get a way to do that. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're talking just this afternoon. <laughs> We're also talking about uh, also we're trying to change as an operating cap reserve. You put in a little level line under the budget for some amount of money in case you unexpected expenses. So we, that all was all included in the rate structure. Figure it out. Our objective there is to put that rate structure stable, and not have to do with looking in favor. A lot of towns around here with some jumping their rates to pay for you know, you know, millions of dollars in the structure that they needed to do without putting money aside. It, it just seems there are several things not in the budget that probably should be, should be. which yeah. might mean that the rates might have to go up. We don't want to, that to to Well, I know you don't want it, but to cut to pay for the things that you're going to need down the road, if if they have to be paid for right. out of the out of the enterprise fund, that's probably the chief concern that we have around this table is that you are self-sustaining and. Uh, and that's, that's, yeah. that's really the bottom line. Um, and if, you, if you are and continue to be, I think everything's well. I, 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 forgot, I forgot to write it down. Uh, <clears throat> there's a 59% increase in operator salary, right? So, what again was the increase in hours from what they what? Thirty to forty. By 30 looking to 40. at the paper, it's actually twenty-five to forty. The number. Okay. It's not just DEP; it's also the commissioners. We feel so we need to have a full-time operator. Yep. You got to have a full-time operator. It's just makes the game. I don't think you get an argument. I, I, you know, I mean, it's um, it's the new reality. Um, you got to try to hang on to people. They've been having a hard time. Yeah. I, I was I remember doing something when I was working in this industry twenty years ago. Uh, the New Hampshire Water Works Association we had a powwow for a day. The most various members of the world, you know, operated the superintendents around the state of New Hampshire, and the concern was workforce in the future. Because all the people now the table people my age at the time, mm -hmm. now they're all retired. And yeah, and so on in the business. So you're like get a phone call at 21, but it's tight, it's less than a mm -hmm. They don't want their bigger to pay. Not to, they need to kind of part of the problem. They want to make a million bucks. They also want to do it on a computer. Well, they can't always do it on a computer. Hey, quick way, hey, look, early Park looks terrific. Correct. Early, early Park looks terrific. Tim, you guys have done a great job, Tim. But I was thinking, you know, is there any, have you thought about tapping into the Connecticut River for water? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, well, okay. and it's going to be easy. No. You got to have palm. You know, it's not. Yeah. yeah. Sounds easy, but uh, maybe for agriculture. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just thought I'd you can't it. just throw a hose in there and start sucking it out. Right. You got to be permitted. Yeah. It's a that's Never a mind. nightmare in itself. The bureaucracy that I do with my line of work with yeah. the water door, I was trying to get permits. Yeah. Good it's it's yeah. amazing. I think someone that's how my plane is available twenty four seven. Yeah. That we get residents get response from instantly without having to get so I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. In Northampton, you can't you can't find your water shut up up to three hundred dollars feet, and your call waiting comes over and does it. So having someone local for that is incredible. We're very fortunate. Well, I think we just found another fee. 
really can flow. All righty, any other? What's what's this thing? <clears throat> List of uh, new meter, I assume <laughs> new meters, <laughs> full bloom municipal buildings. Well, he's supposed to get this or what? Well, you guys well, got it. it. I got it in the, it's an email at home. And, uh, yeah, everybody has it. Everybody got one. So. Yeah. Oh, that's just. Well, these are, yeah, these are meters that we abated because of these issues. I don't know what this is in relation to. This is in my family, Yeah, it's so. really. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this was stuff we abated and then resent out. Oh, all right. What is the second thing? Maybe that's the yeah. one. Oh, that's cool. Okay. You're not you're not looking for to get paid for those it's for that water use. What happened to that all got Ukrainian cemetery on OPR? No, the other thing here for you. Oh, okay. It's right, right over there. It's right right there. Yeah. But, okay. So what this is is we have their original transfer revenue budget for yeah. yeah. You have a revenue sheet collected today. Yeah. The commitment that went out April third is about ninety five thousand. These are meters or billings that didn't go out or evaded or not do revenue that won't be realized. Okay. 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 This is why the elementary school the elementary schools are <laughs> here. <laughs> Hooked out. Yeah, well, that's, your right. Right. that's revenue that's not being realized that's affecting overall. Yeah. Do you know what your collection rate is, Wayne? Like you just set up the commitment. It, what percentage is you, 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 you don't have to say 90. 90. 90. 90. It's usually pretty good. You don't have to shut people off or no, you can't. You, oh, you can. can. I mean, you have to. There's a lot of <clears throat> stuff you have to go through. Yeah. You're not I don't know if they still do it, but they used to. I mean, you get maybe a full page of delinquent ones, but they'd be more like if their bill was a hundred dollars and sixty cents, they'd write you a check for a hundred dollars. <laughs> okay, you know what I mean? There, there wasn't very big ones, or just a lot of small, tiny. Yeah, they're just proving a point. Or they're trying to. Um, <clears throat> yes. Right. right. <clears throat> Wayne, on, on our agenda, we have to discuss the water department transfer. <laughs> um, but you what is that? Okay. So, come to find out which they never do. So, when we when they moved up my hours, of course, now the salary line item wasn't going to be enough, which we always just thought the budget was the budget as long as you didn't go over it. But I guess with our enterprise fund budget, the two of them are separate. So salary one and the regular operating one. So what this is all about is we want to move money from the operating budget to the salary one I see. to cover the rest of the year. <clears throat> you guys got this thing. Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> Well, what that is that you can make copies of is it's just showing that there's enough money in our operating budget to move money from it's what we need for the rest of the year to to get to 40 hours. No, that and pay all everything and cover the operating. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when does the 40 hours start for you? It did. Right it already did. <laughs> <laughs> so when did the water industries go for that? September, maybe? Sorry? September, maybe? 
No, the DO Department of Revenue requires salary line items to be funded for 52 weeks. And it requires the accountant to certify that if there's not a salary line item there for 52 weeks, the rate shall not be paid. Mm -hmm. But that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So in order for us mm -hmm. to continue to pay Wayne, we need to because the division of wage and hours says people must be paid within seven days before or performed unless an agreement in this to the contrary, which means we pay our folks by weekly. So that's okay. So in order for the accountant to um, run the deficit, which is currently at $6,800 in the salary line item, she asked that Wayne request of this committee that is authorized by Laura May and June of each fiscal year to approve and mental transfers to verbally at this meeting Assent to that you will approve the transfer from expense okay. to salary. So she has an insurance and can certify that there will be money to make that account whole and when you continue to be paid through okay. June 30. Mm -hmm. And due to a lot of effort on Wayne and Amy and Dara and Lynn's part, Wayne, as he's represented, has enough money through June 30th. But there's not a lot of wiggle room, so he has to be really, really careful between now and then. But you need to vote tonight that in May or June, whenever you do those along with the select board, mm -hmm. you will affirmatively approve that. And we have to notify the accountant tomorrow because it's already in deficit. Okay. Brenda, did you hear that? Yes, I did. Sorry, it takes me a second. Yes, I heard that. Okay. Good, good. Um, okay, so we are going to vote on. So, what is is there a number, or we're just voting to get that you will transfer. approve a transfer of funds to make the salary line full in the water line item as through June 30th? You want to repeat that, or could, just you, say make, could you make a motion? I make a motion that we do what she said. Ditto. Okay. Yeah. Ditto. How's that? Are Do there any to... questions about that motion? No. Do we understand, understand that? That is a transfer? No. No. Okay. Well, <laughs> how much? We don't know how much. And we're not going to we know, know until sometime um, in June. Hold on. You look on the right hand side. Yeah, I think it's 25000 Yeah. On the paper, total yeah. payroll, 25458 23 Yeah, for all of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so make that motion with that number. With that motion. I make a motion. Well, we're not doing it right now. We did. Right. I make a motion that by July 1st. Is that okay? Yes. I make a motion that by July 1st, the Finance Committee will transfer $25,458.23 from the operating, operating budget to the salary budget of the water department. Expense. Expense. Yeah. For expenses incurred. Yeah. Would anyone like to second? Yeah. Second act. Okay. Then we're going to go um, man by man, person by person, uh, to um, vote on this. Paul Newland? Aye. Dan? Aye. Jim? Aye. Jim? Aye. Paul? Aye. Aye. Brenda? Aye. Unanimous vote. Um, so that those monies can be transferred, and you can tell the accountant tomorrow morning that uh, Wayne's still on board. All good things come to fruition. All right. Where's that All right. Do we have anything else with the water department? Okay. All right. We're at um but Wayne, thank you very much. George, everybody, thanks for coming in. Thank you. And uh good discussion. And uh turn the tap on. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, we are still, but we are out. Um,
Can you can we kind of sort of just kind of um, jump? We're gonna put school school budgets on uh, last yeah. last at this point. And why is Mr. Bardwell here? Please. That's what I'm like. Yeah. I think it's a salary adjustment. Yes or no? Just stop then. Just to say hi. Just to say hi. That's what he yeah. does for fun. Oh, <laughs> nah, he's got. He can go home. Well, how's the? Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Well, why don't we get into the capital a little bit and um, have a discussion on that? Our representative to the capital, Dan, and uh, I know I had that here somewhere. Okay, we're going to do uh, yeah. play the paper shuffle. Um, yes, yeah. Oh my gosh. We've got a color color. Yeah. There we go. This isn't very small. It is small. <clears throat> we should have got those three-time magnifiers. That's... Okay. 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 Um, then we'll um, we'll just start at the top and work our way down. Dan, are you ready to speak to some of this? Yeah. Okay. Um, um, Fred's here and Julie's here. I'm, I'm sure they've had some <clears throat> interaction with uh, these things. So first, first of all, um, an estimated cost of fifty-four thousand dollars would be the inst installation of electrical okay. sub panels at the elementary school. Okay, and um, is that? Um, Actually tied with the next one. I was going to say. Okay. We have JD, any splits. JD and I. Okay. And Jim Perkendall. Okay. Met at the elementary school mm -hmm. with Bill Hildreth. Billy Hildreth and with the custodian. Yep. And got a pretty extensive tour of the operation of the school from the mechanical standpoint okay and one of the things that was brought to our attention is the, <clears throat> the first thing they have to do is upgrade the electrical system the current electrical system will not support these new mini splits mm -hmm. so the first thing they're going to do is spend roughly the fifty four thousand to upgrade the power source power so source we'll into go ahead with the next items right you want to explain okay it, but... the next two items yep so all told we're looking to uh fund one hundred seventy two thousand dollars no um, not, not really this, not really okay for the, thank uh, you the mini splits are in two phases one uh, phase would be this year okay phase, phase two would be next uh, year okay uh, and what does that mean for the school, so, phase one and two? So I had a lot of concerns about this issue with Bill Hildreth, and no one needs big buildings and tennis plus. It's not about it. You need those deep costs, but not really big buildings. And the push for many spaces because the state reimbursement money for an electric by the future. But okay. you don't have to, you can have. The heat pumps without many splitting is the system that they have without having to put the big electrical system in. Mm -hmm. And I asked for a comparison to know what it would cost to take the existing system that we already have, the ductwork that's already there, and put a heat pump air conditioning on that, taking the advantage of potential PV to run them, make it more efficient, lets you put in ultraviolet white filters. But you put in uh, HEPA filters in the line, mm. already tied into the system, and you didn't get anywhere with that. Mm. And to have all of these mini splits put inside the building, it's a band aid effect right now. But um, they need to tie into the building management system because there'd be a situation where the heat is on in the room and the mini splits making air conditioning in the same room unless they're talking to each other. It's immensely expensive. Per unit to tie those together, according to Mr. Holder. Mm. Um, the ductwork in that building has never been cleaned since it was built in 1991. Yeah. I had asked our staff administrator about if we could use ARPA funds for that. 
that field did that this year, but those ducts have never been closed since 1991. That wow. And that needs to get done. That's what kids are saying. The air quality is horrible in there. That's part of that. I, so I think we would need a request from the school. Or in Hatfield, or in Hatfield, in Hatfield yeah. the facilities director of uh, the DPW directors of the facilities, he used it on the COVID money to come that, up. That's fine, but we just need a request from the we, school. A request we, from the school. Okay. Right. And we're not going to self initiate. Right. So that. I would want to see is there, can we use the existing stuff that we have using heat pump technology? To make this work before we go at throwing all this money and putting many splits in, that they're going to have new refrigeration as of next year because the refrigerant we use now is obsolete. Yeah. And equipment that the life cycle is eight, 10, 12 years, and then we've got to upgrade it again. Mm -hmm. So I just want a little more long term analysis before we make a decision. Yeah. But right now, it's just a quick throw many splits in a solution, but is that really the right solution? And I don't have that answer. So who is the who would be the individual responsible for putting this here? Bill Hilder. Bill Hilder. Bill Hilder. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the school committee? Or I assume in consultation with the school committee and the principal and the rest, but yeah. mm -hmm. it's, it's coming to the schools and Bill Hilder is yeah. responsible for maintenance and uh physical plant in, in, for in meeting with him his budget is so tight he doesn't have money to yeah money no no it. i i know he doesn't have money which is why he will put through <laughs> the of the various yeah uh, the there's, there's various towns that he's responsible for if we can use the existing ductwork system we have we can add filtration we can add sanitation we yeah can't do that with these bits. so many more benefits to upgrading the system that we have yeah, th th this has been on the agenda for a couple of years now, right? And right. we've never been satisfied that it's the right way to go, right? And, and we're still not. No. Well, we're talking about one hundred seventy thousand dollars. Well, it's not the right way to go. It, right. it, it'd be very hard for us to tell them that. taxpayers of Wheatley to lay out one hundred seventy-two thousand dollars to a um, to a building. Where the maintenance hasn't even been kept up to par forever. I, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, was it was it literally was an eye opener going in there, and some of the things we saw just eye opener. Yep. yep. I would suggest that that this be tabled um, until. We can have a face to face with the decision makers um, who are behind this, um, who are advocating for this. <laughs> and uh, we, we need to tease this a little bit um, as to where, um, where the issues really are, and whether or not is it, whether or not this is, let's push this thing through. If, you know, well, I think we need to know what the alternatives are. Yeah, we, we need someone to say, okay, mm -hmm. this is what we can do, what we have, and then there's many splits, and let's have a discussion between the two. Mm -hmm. But right now, we're only thinking many splits are being shoved down our throats, and we don't know what the other well, alternatives are. One of the reasons the many splits are being pushed is that Eversource has a rebate right. program which is expiring, and but there's like a 40% rebate. But if it's the longevity of the equipment, if the equipment's only good for the right. Well, I, I, I'm just saying that, that, but that's why the mini splits are getting pushed because that's where he, he know, did tell us that there were, were rebates involved, but and he did not say that they were going to be coming to an end. Yeah, they think so. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's, the, yeah, that's why it's being pushed because they don't know when the rebates are going to end. Yeah. The mini splits are great. The pumps are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> if we put heat pumps in. Where would the fresh air come from? The heat pump is only. I mean, I, I mean, many split. They would be hanging the units all over the side of the building. So every one of them is kind of its own power to run it. They're all independent little units. But all they would be taking an outside air. No, they don't. No, that's that's right. They, they don't. don't they're they're, they're just conditioning the air that's in the room. Yeah, like 
the ones in my house. Yeah, I have a problem. But if we have it's exactly a, like yours, if we upgrade the system that we have, we can bring in fresh air, we can filter it, we can sanitize and sterilize the air that's there and redistribute it through nice clean duct work. Do, do, right. do the heat pumps provide air conditioning or just heat? Well, oh, heat pumps do both. Okay. Air conditioning anything. Yeah. But the system we have right now doesn't. Air it's just heat. Yeah. Just heat. Yeah. So that's that's important. This this it certainly has not been um there isn't there isn't enough information in here for us to recommend that people would that they drop on in seventy two thousand miles into the school. Right. So do you want to make a recommendation that we table these three? Yes. I make a motion we table the first three articles on the capital budget. Right. Um all the the because we all got different stage sheets. Oh, okay. Uh, the first one is the fifty-four thousand for the electrical sub panels. The second one is sixty-three thousand for six mini splits, and the third one is fifty-five thousand for five mini splits. We're just going to table it for now. Okay. Can can we get possibly move this? To the next meeting and see if we can get um, yeah, tell Bill Zildreth to come in and um, explain to us his side of this. And um, he may be able to explain it better. <clears throat> yeah. So, really, you know, it's heat pump technology, but it's either either a mini split or using the system. Right. Yeah, I think part of the problem we're going to have doing this quickly. Is that we may need some sort of outside uh, study, additional or, evaluation of this, because <clears throat> I've met with Bill as well and well through the school, and this is his proposal for a solution. So that's that's what we would hear from him. Right. Yeah. He was very open to talking about this. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, he's, 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 he's uh, very confident. Yeah. Very. Yeah. He's very confident. I'm not. Yeah. Nothing wrong yeah. here. It's just. If he comes, he's going to be. This is his solution this, to the problem. This is his solution to the problem. Yeah. Okay. okay. So if we could try to make that happen for the next meeting, that would be uh, that would be good. Okay. Moving down the list for the elementary school. Next, we have a uh, flooring replacement for three K restrooms. Absolutely. S N K. Ah, absolutely. If you saw what was going on yeah. in there, without a doubt. Okay, I'll call it. <laughs> okay. Uh, then we have exterior door replacement. Three of them. Absolutely. Same thing. Yeah. 13, yeah. five. Yeah. Uh, I don't think to make any argument there. Um, replacing air packs for the fire department at two hundred two thousand dollars. Hey, he's looking for a grant. He's supplied for a grant for this. Right. Whether he gets it or not. Yeah. Who knows? <clears throat> I, um, I don't think he's really looking to get this funded. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Okay. Yes. What well, is the status? I think I, I mentioned before the the roof of the elementary school because it's its days are numbered. I think I mentioned to you, Fred. You said it was on a capital plan. It's on a long term capital plan. According to Mr. Hildreth, we have like a year or two, and that's it. Oh boy. Because yeah, the, the nails coming through the roof, the holes are too big. He's yeah. already spending mm -hmm. like five to ten thousand dollars a year on roof repairs, and they it, can't it's find like, any bigger nail. I, I think we don't have an estimate for it. We don't think we, okay. I don't think we can deal with it this year. Oh, is it twenty thousand? No, not even because not this even, is right. the second. Because it's the second roof. Yeah. They all have to be replaced, yeah. and it's metal. And they were somebody's. Talking, he was ahead. talking about. Oh, we're just going to put a standing sink roof on it. Like, why are we not showing the for part of the price? Yeah. There you yeah. go. That's what we that, I think we need to make a priority in <clears throat> addressing that, but okay. we can't. I don't think we well, can. Not today, but we might. Like, it's not. But that, that's on the okay. back for the next Mr. year or two. Chair, maybe okay. if I ask him next week to come, if we could see a list of capital items, not just for FY25, but what he's projecting out for the next three to five years. So that would, yeah, that would, that would be smart. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, getting back to the air packs. Yeah. We're, it's there. We think that he hopes for a grant. He may or may not get it. Yeah. 
at some <laughs> point, people <laughs> might come back to us and say, okay, I didn't get a grant, <laughs> now it's getting a return. Okay, does he want to put a piece of it in here? You know, like not, splitting? not that I've, yeah, okay. I, I haven't heard that request mm -hmm. personally. I think we're all sensitive to the safety aspect yeah, yeah. of this. And uh, I have a question, Keith. Does a member of the fire department, do you have to do all the air packs at once, or is it something you could do over <clears throat> two years or something? Is there any rules or anything about that? I'm not sure if that's it. Or yeah. yeah, you definitely you want don't want this this mass okay. equipment. That's one problem. And We'll be going from from one operating pressure to a different operating pressure. Okay. Well, ours are substandard and so low. Okay. That it would be in our best interest to have them all just do it once. So Otherwise, yeah, but didn't was in here and he yeah. didn't ask for a partial thing. Yeah. No, you didn't. I, I don't, don't know what his <laughs> like the volume. But there line. is going back to your question there. Uh, there is in the capital planning long range the. Uh, Turnout gear will be coming up in a couple of years. Yeah, replacement of that. So that would be a good idea to put some monies in for could be worded for uh, not the equipment but for uh, the firefighters' equipment. Mm -hmm. And put some money in it now because that one's going to be a big one too. Sure, very much like how we'll and that's the one that's kind of mandated by mm -hmm. the city. Yeah. Maybe we put some money to capital stabilization and sort of earmark yeah. it right. for it, rather, rather than setting up a new account. Right, exactly. So typically with the scuba gear, depending on how many you need to replace, let's say if you needed eight, it would be a two-year program for the first year, for the second year. You couldn't do two, 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 because of oh. exactly the pressure. Yeah. But, if, you know, I don't know how many he said he needed in total, but then you just have... Two systems to maintain as you're rotating out the old ones and bringing in the new, but you can be in complete phases so you know when to begin and the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable approach. And but I don't know how many. Yeah, well, we'll say, but if the grant comes in, well, not, we'll and again, he did not when he was here. He didn't express an urgency. No. You know. Right, right. But we did see the difference between. No, well, well, we, well, we saw. Oh, there's no yeah. doubt that. The new equipment is preferable yeah. and we will go over there. The fact that that you know we interact with other departments and the kind of equipment they have and that it uh, but he, he did not come in and say my firefighters will be at risk yeah. because of this. Right, right, right. Okay, so that being said, do we want to table this? No, no. I think that you know I mean. What do you think? I think we should approve it. I do too. Thanks, sir. The whole thing? Lock, stock, and barrel. Three air packs? Yeah. Yeah. For the exact reason that Keith just said. And if if he gets a grant, so be it. If some other yes. funding source comes along, so All right. be it. But I think it's something we got to do. Okay. So um, right here and now, um, are there any questions regarding this two hundred and two thousand dollar request for the fire department um, to replace outdated air packs? I I think that I just one comment on that yep. based on what Trish said. Maybe you want to do it in two, do half this year and half next. That's contrary to what you said. Yeah, that's uh, contrary to what yeah, and I'm not sure. Well, pricing wise, how that affects. Okay. I don't know without speaking with the JP on that, but the number that I can just quickly run through my head is it's probably a total of 14 or 15 between okay. the three trucks. Okay. Each um, of the first two out the door, definitely six piece on those trucks. So you need 12. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I think I'm not sure. I guess. We're, yeah, we're going to put yeah. all. Excuse me, could you say that again? Maybe you could just ask the chief. That's chief, how he wants with one. Yeah. Oh, okay. We could table the next meeting. Oh, yeah, we could table this the next meeting so we can. Okay. We, okay. Can, we can ask the chief, but okay. generally speaking, it sounds like we're all in agreement that yeah. that we need to put this kind of equipment in their hands. Mm -hmm. I will check with him, but I'm pretty sure he's gone off price and from. Up and it's less than two hundred thousand. 
I think he came in with about one one eighty five or something like that. So mm -hmm. I'll try when we get the right number. Okay. Well, if we could get him back on the agenda, um, yeah. even for the next meeting, it, it would be short. But um, I think that would be I think that would be helpful. And uh, obviously, it is a chunk of money, and we do wait to the end to uh, approve all budgets, and then um, so that would work. Okay, um, new pickup truck, Ford F one fifty. Highway Department, $85,000. To replace the current 2013 Ford F-150 truck, this truck has 81,282 miles with excessive rust and wear on the body of the truck. Um, okay, it, this started out as an EV, right? Um, and <clears throat> so it's now a hybrid or not? If the pleasure of the town wants to go from the full from a full electric to a hybrid, then we can reduce the cost then for sure. Um, 65, 66 would be adequate to compared to what did I 85, 85. So. <clears throat> 85 was for the EV. Full electric. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> so you're saying though. The uh, lifetime cost of the electric vehicle is higher than the hybrid? Yeah, when we worked out the, the, the specifics, based, especially based on the additional $20,000 cost over the hybrid, it yeah. certainly doesn't pay for it. And I honestly think that's what you're going to find why there's a surplus of of electrics out there right now. In fact, even today's news, well, Tesla's, Tesla's dropping price. They don't have their things are going the other way now. Yep. The electric. Yep. Keith, what is the cost of charging <coughs> this vehicle on top of this 85? Would that be a charge around the plane? Well, first of all, we don't, there, the town doesn't have any money. There is no charging station. Okay. That so would be a whole cost? other scenario <laughs> that when this all started, years ago with uh, Lohanna and then Sylvie trying to do stuff with, with grants and stuff, it, it's nothing that's coming to fruition, but- um, Well, we've got a re better study that we're getting reported back sometime in the next couple of weeks. There'll be a presentation yeah. to the select it's board and hearing on- well, I guess my question of our fleet. We buy an $85,000 truck. How much more so that you can plug it in at your house or at the-, at the Highway department. All the places. Again, there, there's there are some communities that have already dealt with <clears throat> like department heads and how they when they if the vehicles charge a personal residence that yeah. they've got to go through and and reimburse for that electricity. But um irregardless, there's no there is no charging station in like at my residence, there's no charging station at the at the town for anywhere in the town's mm -hmm. fleet. So, um, and also based on the simple fact of the additional $20,000, we won't see a, a net return in that investment if we made it. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. The hybrid is definitely a better, better way to go. Mm -hmm. go. Right. What's a, what's a ballpark? What's a charging station cost? Mm -hmm. Depends on what level you want. You want to go with a like a first of all level three you need three phase which is which we don't have which is wrapped really rapid if you want a level two i'm gonna say four to four five six thousand maybe and then a, a direct level three is is hundreds or thousands. there may be some funding that's available through the state yeah to go with the high rate this point <clears throat> my hope it, it, it's difficult to Putting the cost to the mm -hmm. charging station. Wouldn't having a regular gas power stop option? No. Okay. Because we are a uh, green community, mm -hmm. we are re required to do one of the one of the two. Really? Yeah. We're yeah. receiving money. Mm -hmm. We should have to fix that. Just well, no. the money service over. What green community? Police chief. Green 
you <clears throat> while the police chief was in there. Yeah, police cruisers are exempt. Oh, yeah, police cruisers and, are exempt. And any vehicle presently over, I think it's 8,600 GBW. And it depends on the classification, but because this vehicle falls within classification, okay. we have, are, we're obligated to do our diligence because we're receiving money from the state and this green community is act. Okay, so the green communities, <clears throat> there was some discussion at some point that if you wanted to buy a vehicle that had that was a certain percentage better than your current vehicles in terms of gas usage, <laughs> that green communities would be behind that. Is that <laughs> Not, I, I don't have an answer to that. Okay. You might okay. be right. Don't know that would yeah. be. Okay. I'd have to go to see if maybe Sylvie or something mm -hmm. in the office to get an answer to that. I don't okay. All right. I don't really have much interaction with the Green Community Act. That's what the select board have taken yeah. on. Yeah. So, Fred, you said something about. <clears throat> Um, we were looking into charging stations. And next Tuesday, we're going to do a presentation yeah. from a consultant who has prepared a, a study on vehicle electrification, fleet electrification for the town. We'll hear what they have to say next Tuesday. Yeah, okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. I mean, from that standpoint, they're already having one more meeting. What's, what's the date on that, Fred? Next Tuesday. Yeah. So there's no point of just hang on until this. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So this will be tabled again. Okay. <clears throat> okay. How much more is a hybrid over gas? Do you know what the is? It's a lot more about comparable. It's I don't think it was more than two thousand. Oh great. Well, it it's, wasn't much. It's okay. not an off yeah. one. Okay. And, and I, I can't speak for the other members of the select board, yeah. but I, based on past yeah. considerations, current select board would likely frown upon getting okay. a... As a, as a taxpayer, yeah. I just got to ask yeah. that question. But yeah. I don't yeah. think we... I, I can't guarantee anything, we can't but... Anyways. What's that? I'm positive we can't do it anyways. I'm so sorry. Right. Yeah. An F-250 is cheaper than an F-150, and it meets the GBW, we don't have to meet it. Well, again, then you're... Your fuel economy is drastically yeah. Okay. <laughs> Julie, I can't speak for you or Joyce, but okay. my my we have, field no, is okay. that we would not yeah. be interested in that. Okay. Okay. Um all right. Um okay, let's move forward here. Uh project named Yellow Barn Repairs Cemeteries, 7250. <clears throat> Repair wooden sill on the yellow barn. Located adjacent to the center cemetery, the barn is currently used for storage by the town's apartments. The sealed the exterior surface of the brick. This is that's the next. No, one. that's the next. One. Okay, so um, did I miss one? This is priority A. You get it right. Priority. Oh, yeah. This is priority B. Without priority A, we just want to look at priority B. Uh, should there be an opportunity to move some of these expenses up into the A category? But who knows? Um, so the yellow bond repairs, that's, um, do you know anything? Does anybody have any knowledge in this? I can certainly explain where it's at. And that is that the, the bottom eight by eight sill is, you know, is rotted. Three yep. years of water splash up. <clears throat> Rotted. And especially if you look at that north side, you can see the the, the pitch of the, I mean, the, the edge of the roof where it's rotted, it's sagging, and it's already, it's very noticeable to the naked eye as to mm -hmm. it's sagging. And it, the longer you wait, the more expensive it gets. It's, it's big. Jess, do you have a question? No, sorry. Oh, okay. Anyone else want to make a comment? Or... Is this barn of historical value? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, and I consider it historic value. I mean, uh, it was donated to the town by the 
um, Wade family, or the Howard Waite's daughter at the time. And it is incorporated with the addition to the cemetery. And in the deed, it says that the town may use the barn until the time comes where it's best needed for the cemetery, and then it is to be removed. So it has a it is a deed you can you know conditions in the deed that will at some point in time, which based on where the the, the usage of the cemetery is, it's still 30 to 50 years away. So mm -hmm. it's not tomorrow. Yeah. So any money that is put into the barn is not like it's being shortchanged and will be torn down in five years or moved. So yeah. it is. Could this be CPA money? Perhaps. Again, that would be a question to pose to the... The building would have to, the historic society would have to deem it a historical building. The historical, historical society would have to deem it an historical building. Commission. Right? Commission. 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 Yes. Yeah. And I, and the commission. So, should the, so who contacts the commission? To, to drive the historical significance of the property. I think the repose. It has to be the building, yeah. Yeah, the building, right. So I, I through the Board of Select Board, can, would probably make that request to the historical commission. That I think seems it's too, too, probably too late this year to get into mm -hmm. the historical commission. And it's too late in the CPA, okay. CPC's process. That can be well, June. Seeing how this is a project B, I don't know if anyone wanted to see this, these monies tomorrow. To my June. knowledge, the CPC is second week of June. For well, yeah, but they don't, even, they don't have a proposal yet. For, uh, they're, they're, they usually get their submissions in December. For, <clears throat> Well, the capital I think the sure. understanding of being the reason it's a fee is because it's not a safety issue, but it's also a concern that if it isn't propped up pretty quick, like yeah. he said, it's affecting the roof already, then you're going to yeah. go into a roof shop. Sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, okay. I I wouldn't say just because it's a fee, it's not needed. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, it just it, it, it just seems to me that if we throw new tiles on a silo up here <laughs> with 22k, that why can't we fix our own town historical building with one third the money? To me, that uh, that. Uh, 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 well, I'm, won't, I'm not arguing. You won't get an argument from me either. But I mean, there okay, we hear you. All right. Um, you can see where that got us. Yep. Um, well, okay. Um, so, yellow bond repairs, I think you've made a good point, Keith, that it's better sooner than yeah. later. Yeah. Um, okay, library, $6,500 to reseal exterior brick surfaces. I think I think we had the commission in here. They Bob spoke Smith to us. Bob Smith, Smith spoke spoke to us, and something that needs to be done. It needs yeah. to be done. Yeah. Okay. Purchase new guardrail mower <clears throat> for the highway department. Uh, purchase a new uh, <clears throat> in the amount of twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars to purchase a new guardrail post mower attachment for the tractor to mow around guardrail. Post to keep visibility along the sides of roads. Wasn't there some discussion that, that was going to help benefit the employees not getting employees by ABE? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So it was, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Keith, is this written in stone? That number? Yeah, that, that's a tight number. Okay. Okay. Well, Again, it comes, sounds like it's a safety issue. Okay. Um, replace the two seven, 2017 unmarked cruiser 
for the police department at $65,000 uh, was, this was the cruise that he was speaking about? No. This is another one. This is something, if I understood him right, he wants another marked. He's going to keep the one he has, the unmarked one. It's going right. to continue to be his. Mm -hmm. He wanted another marked one. Now, I may be wrong, but I was thinking <clears throat> about it today. and That's the way I took it, too. And then he'll be using his unmarked one when it gets real bad to replace the existing traffic. <clears throat> which is only goes out on traffic. It's, it's paid for. Every time it goes out, we can get the money back. Right. And that's where he's going to put his gray one once it gets old and then throw that one out. So, yeah, what? he made the comment, yeah, you see a lot of cruisers there. Well, that's because one of them is just for detail work. Right. <laughs> okay. But now we're going to have two hybrid SUVs marked that are going to be a year apart. We're going to have the 2017 that unmarked that he's driving and the 2015 or whatever the oldest one is that's sitting there that's going to be the detail car. We have three full-time police officers and we're going to have three cruisers Frontline cruisers, an unmarked and two marked ones that are only a year old, both of them. There's only three guys working and they only work one at a time. I can't wrap my head around that. I know it's in the capital budget. I understand that. And, you know, but, but because he wants one and, you know, his reasoning wasn't good enough for me personally. If you said to me, let's take $50,000 and put it in the vehicle stabilization fund and earmark it to replace his, or, you know, when we got to replace one, we got some money in there. That I'll vote for. But to, to get another marked cruiser at this point, yeah. I cannot vote for that. I won't. I think we should ask him back in. Yeah, don't we have uh, uh, money put aside for uh, cruisers? Is this is unmarked. This is an unmarked. Well, he's, what he's that. got is changed now. He changed it. <coughs> and he, his vehicle is an unmarked right. Cruiser, yeah. Right. And he puts on he puts on forty miles a week with that. With I, I don't know. Well, the numbers that he gave us last time as to what was on the odometer. Um, um, and based on when they got it, I did just yeah, I mean, a little yeah, fast he, math. He told us how many miles. Yeah, it. right. That was 40, 40 miles a week. I, I would agree with Dan to have him back in and for him to bring in a timeline for the next 10 years of which exactly which vehicles he would yeah. want to replace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when he, he goes, you know, he, he's he, just, he, just he, for, he for our clarification. Yep. No, and I, what he will be looking for. Yep. The capital in layout case. got screwed up in sequence because of the delay in getting the last one. Yeah, he right. Didn't he, he ordered it? Took, took two years right, to get it. Right, yeah. Right. yeah, the whole COVID thing. It's got it's all messed up now. So yeah, it's long range okay. planning. Right, but I still, you know, we're at it. We're, we're always at somewhat of a disadvantage here. We've had this discussion before, but there should be an inventory list of equipment all of the key departments highway police fire fire boom a list we can we, we can look at it right here look down what's it used for when's it going there was some kind of a math you know dan had a or the capital planning had a list of right we know, list that. yeah i don't know if it's yes no anyway right. we, we, we've had some friends but this seems to be out of sequence this is out of state and, and yeah that's fine. and it's not Replacing the it's normal course. Not, no, it's not. So no, no. I think we need this to is in addition to, and I I think you're absolutely right. Um, the chief has to come back. Um, come for chairman, by the way. He's, 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 all right, we'll see if he's still around. All right, well, okay, we'll hold off on that.
Um, oh, yeah. What do we need an unmarked cable for? They need an unmarked cable from I, I was told they cannot transport juveniles in a marked cruiser. Plus, plus they're very sneaky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need at least one. Okay. Um, so so this applies to Conway and all the other towns. Yep. They all have an unmarked. Yeah, that's that right. Yeah. yeah. Conway only has one cruiser in the tunnel. They only have one cruiser. Yes, they, they, one, it's the one whole size cruiser. SUV. So, they don't have a highway though. They don't have a town garage. They have a town garage. Sure they do. Right? Oh, they did. Did. <laughs> they did for a very long time. They got right a Taj Mahal. No. Right. 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 Ask anybody who lives in Conway. I haven't been up there in a while. <laughs> that's another. That's a whole other can of worms. Yeah. All right. We'll leave that. Alone. Yeah, you won't touch that. Okay. All righty. So, um, where were we here? We're going to. Um, okay. So we're going to have them back in. Go to C. Okay. So we're going to look at C, install double lane batting cages at the athletic field. CPA. C C C P A. I love those. Sure. I love that. I love writing that. C P A. Okay, okay. okay. nice. Um, purchase electronic voting tabulators for 17555. Um, That's going to replace the old crank box. Oh, we can't do that. No, we can't do that. It's a I love those boxes. The, the, the likelihood is at some point there'll be a state mandate. Yeah, the I, I, well, I can see that. But it isn't there yet. Waiting for that. You know, until they want to burn the place down, we, I think we should protect those boxes and all their cost. Just like the crank, just the sound of the crank. That's, the, that's the whole beauty. That's the only reason I go. Is to... <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, that's great. The, the that's argument great. is it will save election workers a lot of time at the end of the day rather than sitting in hand counting ballots to be able to. Then we won't open. need as many workers. Right. They have Do they understand that? Coffee, you put them out of business. Uh, well, no, you, you, you still need the same number you, during the day. During the day, but when, you know, normally extra people come into town, <laughs> especially the presidential election. Especially. Uh, Okay. I, having worked at the polls for many, many years, mm -hmm. I can understand why this is <clears throat> okay. necessary. Okay. But um, why it's requested? I don't know. Yes, I can understand why it's requested. It, okay. it might be used every, you know, every okay. two years. You're going to need it, but okay. Well, it'll be used for every election, but yeah, it would not be necessary. Right. Mm -hmm. And there was, there's been some discussion about that the crank box will still be there on display. That mm -hmm. you, can you be able to use it? Mm, I guess you can turn the crank uh, yourself. Okay. <laughs> Somebody can. All right. I'll still go. <laughs> All right. Um, well, um, okay. We have explanation behind that. Um, how we move on it. Do we have any questions about the purchase of electronic voting tabulators that we have? Not touched upon. Okay. See what um, okay. Then we have two areas of no um, no action. Okay. All right. So that's CPA. Um, and um, we still have a lot of unanswered questions. We got to have a couple of people back in. Hold on. Anticipate Captain Mark. Thank you. I didn't see that. Okay. I missed it. Um, Okay, anticipated capital projects from regional organizations. Tritown Beach purchase and install swimming docks. At the same page at the bottom. At the very bottom. Um, I think that's going to be a CPC request for next year. Well, that's why I love that. Well, those yeah. three yeah. Uh, letters again. Okay. SCEMS. I think, I think they have pulled the requests. They pulled it. I'm trying. Well, I hope right. so. Uh, Based on their revenue projection and cost. I think that was something in the paper. Yeah. And the, it, it was. Yeah, but when you hear, I, I could, he, he did not. I, I think, if I remember from our, the previous okay. meeting there, that they had been pulled. So, so they, like, I, I will double check that. And so that is both of them? That would be both of them. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so we'll hold off on that. Uh, and Senior center. purchasing new transport van. Um, 6250. Wasn't there discussion there was a grant or something? Yeah. Yeah. I think there was a cover a huge portion of the van, and this was the balance to get that. Um, that could be. That could be. Let's just say. Um, it was like a, they were going to get like 70 or 80,000 from the state if they caught that six. Does anybody recall that? Wait, wait. This is the South Senior Center. Center. Uh, senior Center that uh, the van, Jim recalls that they were, they spoke of a grant that would be yeah. coming in um, to take most of the cost of that van. Right, and this would be. This would be. Yeah, this yeah, there, there would be a yeah, this would be there. there. Okay, well, that was. And again, I, I can't rides. speak for the select board, but this is the kind of thing that that. COVID relief money mm -hmm. could be but, well go. Okay. Yeah. Begin those five lovely flooded COVID. Okay. All right. So possibly COVID scams has been pulled. The dock is CPC and um, double lane batty cages is CPA. Um, just want to throw out while we while we broach the discussion of uh, applying to the historical commission. To identify yeah. historical structures in town, maybe we should that the select board could be proactive and take a look at what we have that could be considered historical. That when it comes up for repair, we automatically go over to grab some of that CPA money um, for that product. Okay. No, I just. What, with the yellow bar, mm -hmm. okay, it would be wonderful if that was already uh, an historical, uh, considered historically significant by the historical commission and the, t the town. And if it was so, if the application for the CPA would have been much easier, more straightforward, and those monies would be available. Are there other structures in town which could which qualify qualify down the street? I guess. Yeah, I yeah. Are there? Is it based on what he said about the the will to give from the Wade family? Yeah, because that building has a finite life. It's going to come to its end. Yeah, can we make it historical and then knock it down? Uh, I, I don't know. know. I don't know. I, I maybe you never knock it down. Who the heck knows? You have to pay them. You'll I think them. the whole thing is, is and to answer your question, Bob, to look at anything else, that's where the historical commission should play a role. I mean, so, I, I can make a recommendation, right. but they're the ones that need to, to evaluate everything. So but, then, that would, it sounds to me like it's a letter from select board to the historical commission outlining the the need to identify buildings structures within the town that are historically significant and put a label on them that they are they are that and um, structures that belong to the town that belong, belong to the town belong to the town exactly yeah I I don't think that we've got the time to. Do that for this structure. We've got no four, four on, weeks and no. Oh no, I'm not no, last. No, I've got this one, but yeah, but down yeah. stream. But to, I'm not talking about to take care of the yellow barn. We no, yellow barn is here. You know, you know. I think the muddies will off the top of my head. I can't think of any other buildings that <clears throat> the town owns that aren't already declared <clears throat> historical <throat> buildings by. Just be the, like the center school and the town hall. Yep. If the town hall isn't already, those would be the ones that fall in that category. Yeah. Yes, okay. the town hall is. Yeah. 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 Well, I just then you've got other other <coughs> pieces of things like, for instance, the stockade. If, yeah. If that yep. needs to have foundation yep. work done, mm -hmm. things like that. If the Historical Commission has identified it so that it's already a historical site on paper, then the CPA yeah. application is to be streamlined. Yeah. So, you know, I realize that like the West Waitley Chapel and 
the uh, the congregational church do not belong to the town. Um, are they already considered historical? Yes, they'd be eligible. So they're yes. historical. Okay. Yeah. But moving forward, you you never know. Well, yeah, CPA see, see, covered the windows at the church. That's, the that's true. That's true. It didn't. Okay. All right. I won't be the dead horse. Okay. Um. All right. It's uh ten of eight, and we are um. At 10, 10 of 8. Okay, so um, my suggestion would be that we move all school budget discussions to the next meeting. Yep. Um, um, let's talk about staff. And so staff salary adjustments <clears throat> would be uh, next on the agenda. Well, it's all right, yeah. So we can... I'm going to cost them additional. <laughs> the handout we got today. <clears throat> handout we got today. Yep. And so this page here, Trish, that says that's all in. That's all in. That's so cola that's the cola and the adjustments going to yep. be thirty four thousand three seventy five. Yeah. Additional. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> And Keith is here okay. as chair of the personnel committee. Right. And Brenda is a member as well. Correct. Yep. Um, okay. So let's um I mean initially, you know, we, we vote on the three percent at the last meeting. Yep. Um and then um you know this indicates what that resulted in. Um and then we have we have eight positions on the front page that are being moved um, that are requested a move. Um, does that mean for COLA or is that after COLA? Before. That's the before. second page is COLA. With right. COLA. Yeah. Right. Second page. <laughs> okay. So the, the top sheet is what personnel committee actually voted. The what? Top page is what personnel committee actually voted. That's what they vote. They voted. Vote vote ten. Yep. Okay. Remember, they were meeting the day Correct. after you voted. That's, that? that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, so, um, for the people at home that can't see this, uh, but are eagerly waiting to know, um, the position of police officer full time. We have two. Of them. They're asked for an increase before COLA from 51568 to 52124. So an increase of $556.80 a year. Um, part time rate for police officers um, is an increase of <clears throat> 17 cents an hour. Okay. Custodian, 62 cents an hour increase. Operate a laborer entry level highway from 2494 an hour to 2708 an hour for um, $2.14. And operate it for three years plus on the highway, an increase of $2.22 to $27.98 um, per hour. Senior operator. 2821 to 3060, you'd increase $2.39 per hour. The animal inspector is going from 460 to $1,153.50 for an increase of $693.50, which uh, that's that's a, that is a jump. Um, can that be spoken to as to why that occurred? Um, primarily reason is, uh, 
um, we're not going to have one. Yeah, so what's the date? June 30th. June 30th. And um, state says you got to have one. Yep. And so we're working, and that's going to be something that I, I guess the best is that you, Trish, answer that. <laughs> <laughs> So we, based on this, so our um, animals inspector who's done it for a zillion years said he no longer wanted to do it, mm -hmm. especially in view the time it takes because we have a lot of inspections to do. Yep. And yep. for the rate of pay, we looked at the salary survey from Franklin County and our own. Mm -hmm. This is the median. Mm -hmm. We asked him if he considered staying in line, even tripling the salary. He said no. no. So it, it will be vacant July 1, and there are no takers as of yet, even with the tripled salary. Wow. Um, and he agreed to stay on until June 30th. <clears throat> so that's where we're at. And you need not be a resident. Good. One of the things that I feel we should consider, and we've looked into, and we found the answer is to potentially share. Okay. That sounds good. Do we have any? We don't have any takers, probably. I, Share? Hasn't been, it hasn't been broached. The select board hasn't, okay. hasn't like gone out to yeah. advertising. <laughs> but our uh, adjacent communities, abutting communities, they yep. paid, some of them paid double this. Yeah. Double the new. So if they came in with us, we would drop down. Based on we're paying <laughs> less, the average would drop a little less because okay. they would be, have a more affordable. So the so, other piece of this is volume. We're a farming uh, community yeah. animal inspector. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's the other piece of it. That's the piece of it. Yeah. And the other towns, Conway must be. I don't know. Who no. does it in Conway? They have a new one actually. Oh. No, they have a new animal control. I don't know who the animal inspector is. I know who it used to be. But, but no, like he said, we're going to explore that because we need to. Yeah. It's on the way. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So, you leave it there for the next. Yes, Jim. Keith, the three highway department operator positions are around 8 8.5, 8.6% increase. Plus the three percent cola. Can you speak to that? Yeah, it, it's it's gotten to the point where you know, can you just the towns around are are taking and employees from one town away from another. The for what we require to have a CDL and a hoisting license and only be paying twenty four dollars an hour is. It's 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 not competitive, and like just a simple thing. I talked to um, Bob Karras, local Karras Oil, lives in Whaley, and I asked him, "What do you start your employees at?" He says, "I don't have any of my employees less than thirty dollars an hour, and all they require is a CDL. They don't even have to have a hoisting license." Hazmat. Hazmat, which is part of your tanker. CDL. Mm, no, that's a separate endorsement. It's still part of your CDO, but you you don't have that. Right. Hold the separate license. Separate license. Hoisting license is a separate. <laughs> so it's a hazmat. It's it's an endorsement off of your. Yes, but you have every year you I have to. It's not like your regular CDL. Okay. okay. And but the point I'm getting yeah, at, I get and, and I can I'm sure if you can ask other. Contractors around here, the private sector, it's it's a tough world out can't, there. Can't get anybody to work. And just I will also say, look, looking at these numbers, and you know, we've been through my personal committee already, but you're probably gonna have some unhappy police officers making that much less than entry level highway up. Just that's true. The um <clears throat> no question. Um, blame the chief. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Well, you know, I mean, I, are there any other? I fully understand the highway department 
the wages. You guys are taking those jobs because they get the benefits year out of work. But yeah, right. in in the right. private sector, they're making a lot more hours to help, but they're I, just not getting the benefits. So sure. that's right. There's got to be some kind of fully understand. Yeah, you know, but having worked in the private sector, you don't get health insurance. Yeah. You don't get paid holidays. You don't get vacation. No work, no pay. But you get a lot more higher wage. You get a lot higher wage. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But yeah. there's a lot of additional benefits mm -hmm. to working for the town. Yeah. So I got a quote for a wage and classification study for a town our size. It would be um, between ten and twelve thousand. But if we did the job description update, which you mentioned last week. Mm -hmm. It would just be seven thousand dollars to just do the scales. Yeah. Okay. And then we wouldn't have the scales. So for, for twelve thousand or whatever, we would get job descriptions and the wage and the wage scales. Right. But Lynn and I talked today and and Keith mentioned we have job descriptions for all our positions. So they could be updated and we could do those in house yep. and then yep. we could hire someone to do the actual salary okay. analysis and start the wage scale. So the wage so Keith, if we had a wage scale, if we had a step system for the town employees, do you think that would be attractive? Yeah, definitely. I mean, and, and for instance, when you go look at those numbers there in front of you, the 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 entry level highway and then the employee plus three that's basically what the steps are doing because we had a time when years ago when we did have a step system we had separation and then when the step system became obsolete because it was never maintained we then went we had employees that if you had a an entry level employee that started day one was making the same as an employee that's been there for 20 years as mm -hmm. a operator laborer. And <clears throat> there needed to be some type of rec um, recognition for the fact that that 20 year employee has a lot more experience and knowledge of the town. And when you tell that employee to go here and there, they don't have to be taught. They they know what to do. Yeah, right. Which is what <clears throat> the step system will should provide. Okay, so so we have a step system, and all of a sudden, Conway decides to increase their entry level highway position by five dollars an hour, which ends up impacting. Everybody above that entry level position <clears throat> now, all of a sudden, either you or the person in your position now, are they going to come back to? Because what what that set, step system does is it helps employees understand what's in front of them, but it also insulates the taxpayer. It insulates the town from from the variables that exist when other towns increase their pay skip. Perhaps. So yeah, I get that, but at the same point in time, that's where management of it comes into place. Because yes, you can have that in place, but if everybody else around you supersedes you and no one's going to come in to work for it anymore, it has to be managed. You can't just set it in place and forget it. It's going to have to be managed and looked at from time to time and say, you know what? It's worked for five years, but we're falling behind and it needs some adjustment. And that's what happened with it before. We had a system in place. People started climbing it. It never got managed. And it fell apart because it never got managed. Well, then that's the third it has to be managed. You need to make sure you've got a functioning personnel committee at all times. Exactly. Okay. Any other questions, thoughts? Um, nothing. What? Motion to adjourn. To adjourn. Um, we're good. Pete, thanks for coming in and addressing. We're good for who we need to see at the next meeting. You want me to plug these into the budget so I can give you a final budget next week, or what do you want to do? Both? 
Plug them into the budget and we'll vote after they're plugged in. Okay. Okay. Do I have a motion? Make a motion. We adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Paul? Aye. Dan? Aye. Jim? Aye. Jim? Aye. Paul? Aye. Aye. Tom? Brenda? Okay. Okay. We're done.